So, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining our first translator call. And uh, I apologize to those contributors who had to wake up very early to join us. Uh, hopefully next time we'll coordinate better. So, uh, we have a, a lot of things on the agenda. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Y3, V63N, <laughs> Orgenia cannot join us today. So we uh, made some changes to the agenda. And maybe I should share my screen so that you can see. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Mm, okay, here we go. Okay. So can you see the uh, Google Doc? Yeah, it works for me. That's great. So in the proposed agenda, we have this new project, uh, translating the website, then we'll go over the BISC TransFX documentation. Then I thought we should discuss terms and conditions for the BISC software, what we should do about translating that, and then planning for the next release. Uh, so translating the website, we have with us Steve, uh, who uh, writes documentation and uh, is involved in communication. Uh, and there were several ideas on which we, um, pages we would like to translate, and I just listed some. So, um, does anyone want to start about uh, like sharing their ideas and which pages we should prioritize? Um, for, from my my point of view, what would be great or what be would, what would be a good a good start is to translate translate everything for people to download the client. So they, they hit the website, they understand uh, what BISC is about, um, best case also uh, what the BISC DAO is about, and then they can download the client. So, so we do have the, the client translated already in a couple of languages, mm -hmm. and it would be great to, to get more users uh, using these languages, and for that it would be great to have this, this installation flow also translated on the website. So uh, which pages exactly are, 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 are hit by that, I'm not sure, I don't think there are so many. Yes, um, actually, I should have uh, first uh, asked people to introduce <laughs> themselves, but oh well. So we can do that, but uh, I, uh, several people, maybe we should do that now, uh, and then uh, there were several translators who are right now on the call who suggested several uh, websites on the issue. So just briefly, I'll mention that I am uh, Aruna Surya and one of the TransFX admins. And I did translations uh, in translations and reviews in Russian. So, Christoph, would you like to say something? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Christoph. I'm res responsible for the um, BISC desktop repository uh, by development of the client and also um, yeah, so some feature developments, um, and I'm also doing uh, German translations every now and then, doing translations and reviews. Hi, uh, I'm Huey. I've been looking around for some time, and since March, I've been contributing to the Portuguese and the Brazilian Portuguese translations. Uh, hi, I'm Arno, and I've uh, contributed to the French uh, translation. Hi, I'm Pertanauta. I'm also translating for Brazilian Portuguese and reviewing it. Hi, I'm Steve. I think Aruna already introduced me, but I basically do a lot of <laughs> communications and writing, and I stick mainly to English. Yes. So, yeah, I think that Cryptonauta uh, uh, and he uh, made some suggestions on, on the pages. And yeah, I agree with Crystal that we should translate everything that is relevant to the software. So, but it would be good to name the specific pages and maybe also prioritize them. Um, uh, let's see. I, uh, sorry. I have just made, mentioned some pages like homepage, vision, FAQ, and getting started. Uh, so, can we agree? So, Go ahead. I have a list here of the most visited, top 10 most visited uh, parts of the website. Uh, okay. Maybe that would be a place we can use that as a starting point. Um, 
I mean, there's the home page, there's the markets page, which translation is there to do there. Um, uh -huh. So I'll just, I'll just read them out. So the home page, markets uh -huh. page, downloads page, uh, frequently asked questions, uh, release, I'm not sure what that is, the DAO page, stats, uh, the vision page, and that's it. Okay. So pretty much what you said, and then a couple of additional ones. So should we start? We should definitely probably have homepage. Yeah. Uh, and then vision, uh, FAQs, is that right also? Yeah, I think FAQs are crucial. And uh, downloads. Yeah. Yes. And uh, getting started as well. Uh, getting started is uh, quite... There's a, a lot of information, but I think it can be useful. I think getting started would be also necessary as we link it from the homepage and people will click on it for sure. Okay. Yeah. But just for the record, that's that's a documentation page, which is kind yeah. of different. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that is important. And maybe then, Steve, uh, we can, if you can suggest also other, once we have done this, some other uh, pages in documentation that can be useful too. Sure. Yeah. So then, should we just start with these five? Homepage, vision, FAQ, download, and getting started. And what do you think about the DAO information? Is that necessary for the for translation right now? Uh, you, you mean the, the DAO website or the, the DAO page? The this DAO yeah. section? Yeah. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, we could, we could do it as well. I, I think uh, if, if we start uh, translating the website, um, it, it's, it's not such a big additional effort to, to, to add one more page uh, just to, to localize, to make it localized as a translate, translatable. Uh, so yeah, I would just also, also take it. Yeah, I think that there isn't too much, on the, too much text on the DAO page. And then I also would suggest that the markets page there's not a whole lot there to translate either. Yeah. And then it's also like, it's the second most visited page. Actually, it's the most visited page aside from the home page. So I, the, the markets page. Yes. Okay. So then yeah. it will be. And, 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 and so, so, so now, now we nearly have, I think, all the pages, except the statistics. <laughs> so I would just, just, just use statistics as well, because it's just a couple of strings. Yeah. And then, then everything is just top level, at least. Okay, so then we have uh, basically eight, <laughs> all eight pages. Uh, and then, uh, Christoph, you mentioned that unlike in the uh, BISC software, the languages, it doesn't have to be all coordinated. So for instance, there, there are already some translations in Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, and then, um, so each language can go at their own pace. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so, so we don't have a real release cycle and we don't have the issues that we have with the uh, desktop client for, for updating. We can just push whenever we want a, a translation to the website. Um, so I would just say uh, as soon as we have some uh, language ready, we just push it and we can do it any, any time. So that's, that's, there's no uh, problem releasing too, too often on the website side, I think at least. Okay. Uh, the only thing that we also have to, to think about um, if we just want to translate the content or if we also want to translate uh, the URLs as well, but I uh, just looked, we, we don't have them probably, yeah, it's vision, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if it, if, if it would be worth or, so normally I just read on, on, on the SEO, uh, it's 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 good practice to translate all the links, but but that it's mainly if you have longer URLs. Um, sorry about the background noise. Um, it's um, it's not such a big deal for in our case because we have such short uh, uh, links and they don't have so much information in it, which could be reused by search engines. So so yeah, so so I think just doing the the, the website translations and everything that you see should be fine. So just the, the content, okay. Uh, then uh, the next question is, uh, which langu 
languages we should start with. I suggested Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, French, Chinese. We already have some in Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, so, any ideas? Sounds good. I don't have any, yeah, if we go with the most important languages or, and then continue with everything that's uh, uh, so, Sorry? Yeah, we should. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you, or is my audio? Yeah, I can. I can. No, no, I was saying that we should go, but those that are complete in the Transifex already. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, there... so the only thing I, I, what I think doesn't make sense to translate it uh, in a language that is not uh, already in the client also translated. Otherwise, people would uh, download the client and maybe don't speak English uh, properly and they get an English translated client. So. So right now in the client, there are nine uh, languages uh, apart from English. Uh, so should we include all of them right now? Because like uh, Thai and Vietnamese, there some translation work has been, is not fully, like it's not, we're not sure how far we can go and, or should we just do all of nine languages? Are all of them used? Like uh, do they have good user bases or what, do, do we know numbers around that? Uh, we, we don't have any, any numbers, good numbers um, on, on the client usage. So we, what the only thing that we do um, to find it out is uh, if you have an outbound link um, from within the client and it hits one of our properties like docs or the, the website, then we're just adding a, a URL parameter with the language that is selected in the client to have the, some idea of the people who click on these outbound links. Um, but the, the number of users that we uh, got, um, I think it's, it's one, 200, 300 people. So it's just too little, uh, too little sample. And mm -hmm. in this sample for sure, uh, there is there's no Thai, no Vietnamese, no, there are lots of languages that, that are, are not existing. So I would also stick to the most popular ones. Uh, maybe just uh, Aruna, as you mentioned, that, that we select. Um, the first few and if you see that it it helps and it improves the download rate a lot there then we can just one after okay. another yeah so then we'll just stick with these five we have a lot of activity uh, in spanish portuguese russian and french i'm very happy that arnaud uh, uh, is uh, doing, translating a lot uh, Chinese is a little, uh, it's not so much, but I think it's, since it's very important and there are some uh, potential contributors who are interested in joining. So uh, is that okay? Then we'll just do start with these five. Yeah, for, for me, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Then Nick. Um, the the uh, only thing with Chinese, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure um, if, if the BISC website is uh, accessible oh, yes. in China at all. Um, or if, yes. if, 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 if it works through, through mm -hmm. Tor browser or some, yeah. with some, some Tor proxies. Um, but I think in the past, uh, there was some issues uh, to accessing our website from China. And one guy, a, a Chinese one, who created a, a, a Chinese website, a version of BISC. I just let me just quickly check if it's still available. I think it was BISC network. Let's see. I see some Chinese uh, metrics in the analytics, so I, that somehow people are visiting the website there. Okay, yeah, then then let, let's 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 use it, yeah. And what about Persian? Uh, I have spoken to one of the Persian translators, and there's still an issue with right to left. Uh, thingy. Uh, yeah, the, in in the client there is still yeah. um, a problem. I just have to uh, find the time, so it. It seems to, to work uh, for Windows, for Linux, but uh, there's an issue on, on Mac uh, with uh, tabs and I think with some UI controls that they are squashed uh, so small that you can't read the, the text anymore. So that needs to be fi uh, needs to get fixed before. Uh, yeah, I, I have to have a look uh, at okay. it myself. So, so for now, the, uh, hmm? for now, then so we'll just stick with five, and then we can add more languages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and Persian, uh, the, the right to left languages, I would keep until the end because it's not so uh, easy to do it properly on the website, I think, because the, the yeah. you can't just set 
at um, orientation a property and it will just swip as a switch. I think it will be lots of um, uh, manual work. Or uh, Steve, I guess you have a better idea how much uh, uh, work would be necessary to make it dynamic so that that everything is reordered uh, from right to left and so it, it probably works for these languages. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I don't have any experience with right to left languages, uh, so I'd have to look into that more. Okay, uh, then uh, implementation. Uh, Christoph, you mentioned that it's good to have all the translations uh, gone through TransFX, with the exception of potentially YouTube videos, but in this case, it should also be on TransFX. So the question is, and I'm not technical skilled, so how to integrate the BISC site with TransFX? Is that the right question or? Um, actually, we need a, um, a developer who, who kind of um, makes it translatable, the website. So at the moment, it's a mixture. So we have text in Markdown files. We have text in HTML files. Um, and I just did for the call a quick uh, search. There is a, a plugin uh, that should work for our use case. It's called. Um, let me just quickly post the link. Uh, where do I have the group chat? No. Just <laughs> looking. Um, where is the? Ah, here it is. Yeah, just a sec. So I just posted the, the link. So there is. Um, I found um, this this tool that we could use this plugin uh, to translate it. So it would help us, it would work like that. So for all the, the markdown files, we would have uh, for each language, a separate subdirectory where the markdown files are placed. So I think in TransFX, but that's something that uh, we have to try out. Uh, we could uh, upload or reference all the source markdown files. And then if they get translated, uh, we would download all the markdown files, place it into this, subdirectory um, that would be from that place and for all other files, the, the HTML files where we have inline um, a text, uh, um, they need to get extracted into an external a YML file um, and reference them within the HTML. And then this YML file needs to be uploaded to TransFX and it should, and could be translated and then again downloaded and placed into the um, the project to have it translatable. But yeah, that, that's the that's work that needs to be done. And so um, let's see, I, I'm not the <laughs> right person for this type of work. So is there, like, I'm just trying to figure out if we, if there's a specific person we need to talk to or who, who will be doing this? Uh... Mm, there, there's no, so if, if is, is any, does anyone of, of you guys have kind of a develop engineering background? So it's it's not it's not rocket science. So I just quickly I look at the, the plugin. It's it's very good doc. Um, so, so so the main work would be just go to the documentation, um, try it out locally uh, to get it running, and and to configure it. And then yeah, if if that works locally, uh, of course I I could um, I'm happy to help. Um, uh, then just doing the TransFX uh, bridge part, how we get it translated in the end. But yeah, it, would, it would be great if, uh, if I wouldn't have to do this myself. So I, I don't think it's, it's lots of work, but yeah, it, it is some work. So it's uh, I've, uh, I've been learning uh, uh, CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. And I've, uh, I've been having a, taking a look at uh, Jekyll. So maybe I'll be able to do the simple stuff. I'll have a look, maybe I'll be able to help. Yeah, it would be great. Maybe you can have a look and, and if you run into any issues to getting it, um, uh, maybe the first step would be just to, to get it running locally. It's, it's also uh, very good documented on our uh, readme on the BISC website. So you should be um, get, having it ready depending on your operating system. That's yeah, yeah, I, I have the BISC website running locally. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, you have it running, I think. Um, and if you follow the, uh, the, the guide on, on this, on this um, plugin, you should get quite far. And yeah, it would be great if you could um, take over this task. And yeah, of course, you can ask me anytime if you need any help. But yeah. what we also need, uh, Aruna, yes. maybe you could, um, we need uh, a design. Mm -hmm. how, how 
we integrate it in the website, the, the language selection? Yes. So uh, then I should talk to Pedro about it, uh, right? Yeah, that okay. would be great, yeah. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so Huey, thank you so much. And uh, maybe after the call, as the other contributors and translators will watch it, maybe there'll be more people who are, can help out. So, and, but we can, uh, I can help like with coordinating, but not the specific details of implementation. So great, then next, uh, yeah, so that's the question, the fourth question is uh, design. Um, then I'll just talk to Pedro and right now we don't have anything. No, just. Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is to ask Christoph, what's the, what's the, what are the tools necessary? It's just Jekyll and... Uh, yeah, so there's no special, so it's, I think, base plugin, but I think we, we do use already a couple of plugins that are Ruby-based uh, within Jekyll. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, it's, you have to, to add this to the configuration. Uh, it, it's it's um, uh, written in the documentation there also, so it has to be added to our okay. configuration uh, in Jekyll. And as soon as it's running, um, you have to do some, create some subdirectories and then uh, try out how it works and if it works as as it's um, as I described and then for for the markdown files it would be quite easy because it's just copying duplicating them um, in certain directories um, but for the the html files we discussed so some i think the markets page is html uh, you would need to go through the html code and and take every um, string and mm -hmm. place it into this um, uh, central translation file. It's also mentioned in the, in the plugin documentation. And then reference these keys within the HTML file. So, so it's, it's kind of a copy pasting, okay. uh, extracting everything. And then, it, then we have it in the centralized uh, translation file and this can be translated uh, via Transifex. Okay, okay. And uh, regarding the content for the website, uh, Steve, if uh, the, uh, some of the translators uh, are having trouble with understanding some concepts, would it be possible for them to um, just reach out to you uh, so that you can clarify some concepts and things like that? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I don't mind re answering questions. I think, um, yeah, I guess however it's convenient. Right, because in the BISC software, there are also some questions, and it's good because uh, you are quite familiar with the documentation. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, there will be some terms that then we can work with the other translators to make it consistent across languages. Great. So sure. then, uh, so in order for us to start this work, uh, do we need to wait for something to happen for this implementation or? So that we can get the text into Transifex. Um, no, we. That what we have to wait for is uh, would be Huey to, to try it out if it works, and um, if it works, um, we have to see um, how the integration wor works with Transifex, and then we can start. We can't. We can't start up front. Of course, people could start translating, but then they have then to find the right keys and copy pasting. So I'm not sure, hundred percent sure, uh, if it's. If it, yeah, yeah, people could start. I just want to um, not waste any any time that's that's mm -hmm. for copying pasting afterwards when we have it translatable. So I, I would just wait. I think uh, it it shouldn't be lots of work to have this this sites which we mentioned uh, translatable. So it's it's not has to be hundred um, percent. Yeah. Okay. And I would just wait until we have it in Transifex. Okay, so we'll wait until it's in Transifex and we'll announce that these pages are available and then the people can start translating. That's great then. I think that's it for the, for the translating the website project. Uh, then uh, I want to, do, you, do you, uh, any of you have any questions? Yep, maybe me, I have a question about uh, uh, sometimes terms are, are difficult to understand uh, for customers. Does uh, we going to implement in the software some uh, glossary or dictionary to help uh, customers to understand uh, the function and uh, what it means? This is a 
very good questions. And unfortunately, Zhenya, why 3 v 63 n is not here with us because he's sick, but he uh, uh, started the glossary initiative. So we have the glossary and we're go have, going to have a style guide. And we also have uh, a, we also have a BISC query uh, spreadsheet where we put all the uh, terms that are yep, not yep. clear. Uh, so maybe there are terms that are uh, need clarification. Maybe we can add the terms there yep. uh, into one spreadsheet, and then uh, we'll coordinate with the developers or so with those who are involved in the in writing the text in English. Because the idea behind this is uh, that if we have this uh, summary and glossary uh, include for customer, maybe we don't need to uh, translate everything, um, every term in uh, in the local language, and it can simplify the work of a translator. But it's uh, just a, a solution we can uh, do another way. Yes, I think it's a good idea, and uh, it's something it's a work in progress. And it would be actually great to coordinate it with other translators to look to find terms that are very weird that are tr hard to translate into different languages but we can continue working on that and yep. uh, yeah so uh any other questions regarding the uh translating the website project well do we want to do we want to discuss the documentation as well the getting started was one of the key components yes uh, sure yeah so, at, great idea documentation i didn't have a look how it is implemented is it similar to the website no it's completely different but i think it's 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 really manual so i think um it's it's not hard to do in the sense that we just make a different another directory and we just put all the files in there the only challenge is i guess uh i think moving everything to trans effects so it's the the text is written in in uh a, a format or a markup called uh, ASCII doc. And so we would have to find a way to extract the clear, the, the text, the clear text, and then import it into, um, into the trans effects. But um, maybe it's, it's similar, like, um, like with Markdown that there is trans effect support. Um, yeah, I can look that up. But from a from an integration standpoint, once it's in TransFX and once the strings are translated, uh, making the translations a part of the, the documentation should not be very hard. I don't think. Cool. Okay. Great. Uh, so we have also uh, Purpurato joining us. Uh, if you would like to introduce yourself, uh, or if not. Uh, Okay, so then I will move on to the next topic on the agenda. I want to briefly go over the BISC TransFX documentation as spe some space specific pages. So let's see, I will again make the, I'll share the screen. Okay, okay, so BISC TransFX documentation. Uh, so just, I'll briefly go over this. Uh, anyone can join uh, as a translator uh, and ideally, we would like I to have. You cannot see it. The. Yes, yes, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So ideally, we would like to have two translators in each team, and um, so that one translator is doing translation, another is doing the review, and vice versa. Uh, and we have these core languages, and we uh, included the reasons. Uh, and they're not like, um, they're just a bunch of reasons for including these uh, languages in the client. Uh, specifically, uh, it's uh, user demand, translator activity, the competence level of uh, speakers in that language and the number of speakers worldwide, and also the importance of having those uh, BISC available in those languages. Uh, does anyone have any questions regarding that? Nope. Oh. Nope. Okay. Uh, and uh, we also mentioned that this is not a final list and it's subject to change. It's very dynamic. And uh, a translator is welcome to create a proposal to add a language. And it will change eventually, like 
as we start translating uh, kind of as more and more translators are involved maybe in creating a, a user base or kind of doing liquidity weeks or something like that then we can include those languages as well so just uh, I want to let you know uh, regarding compensation requests uh, it's also a little complicated uh, topic but uh, we have included some uh, sample compensation requests uh, and again uh, there's no consensus on the rates uh, and uh, with time as more and more translators start uh, submitting compensation requests we'll have a clear kind of range um, does anyone have questions regarding the compensation request amount or things like that I I was looking at the numbers of strings and words, and previously I was using the figures on the graph, and they seem to be in discrepancy with the figures we get when we get the filter. So I ended up using the numbers we get when you choose the filter instead of the okay. graph, like you suggested. So going forward. Okay, I saw that uh, discussion on Slack. So it's uh, using the filter. Uh, is it because when you you arrive at the dashboard of BISC on Transifex, yeah. there's the graph, and you can set it yours and by monthly. Okay. So that should that should be equal to the figures you get when you go to the filters, yeah. but they're not. Okay. I don't know why. Okay, then uh, then we just use the filters. I think that's easiest because, and I also like mentioned this is uh, submitting details of your work. And Jenya and uh, Christos and, and I decided to, we thought that this is would be good enough proof to include. The only problem is that if someone has translated or reviewed a lot, so there's going to be a lot of screenshots. Um, but yeah, so this is the process, including the screenshots, and then in the end. The number of strings as Hugh you mentioned here uh, so that's and, and, and don't Photoshop it <laughs> 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 but I've only screen captured the top information I didn't screen screenshot all the all the strings I don't know if that's okay uh, what uh christoph what should we do in terms of that should we try to have all the screenshots or um let's say that the problem is as um, as, as as everything is now watered in the within the bisque DAO, so it's watered by stakeholders and um if some think that there's not sufficient information for them to to evaluate the conversation request they might vote it down or not vote on it so so that the risk the the less information the risk is for, for the contributor that it might not be voted for in this uh, cycle and it has to be re-entered. Re so if you want to make to be on the on the safe side, I think it's always good to, to provide more information than, than too little for for everything anyone to evaluate. Okay. I don't know if you can see my my compensation request is the issue 272. Maybe it's too, I need to add more. Uh, just open. 272. So. I've put on the the, yeah, the top see. part of the screen. Yeah. Maybe I should uh, screenshot I, I, the rest. Yeah, and do it just to be sure. I would edit because yeah, it's yeah. Of course, I, I can't. I I can only speak for myself. So for for me, it would be okay because I can easily recheck it in the trans effects as I have mm -hmm. added rights. But for, maybe for someone else who is not able to just uh, check check the the details not then vote for it. So it's it's hard to say as as it's it, it's now so decentralized that I can't speak mm -hmm. for, for all, all stakeholders how it will be voted for. And I would just 
I, I don't think there we, we might be because of the amount you're requesting a, a big issue, but just to be sure, I would just add it. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'll do it. So then, uh, just for other translators, then it, it's best to include uh, all the screenshots uh, and also the number of strings, uh, oh, sorry, number of words uh, in the end. So uh, just uh, to uh, repeat. Okay, so that's it for compensations. Uh, then I just want to briefly go over the translation guidelines. Um, so we have, uh, it's, uh, the, it's run by a group of contributors, uh, these contributors, and then I mentioned that, um, uh, let's see, it's kind of clear here, so anyone can become a translator, and reviews, uh, ideally, of course, you perform reviews on someone else's translation, uh, and uh, unless, there's just one translator and then uh, the other translators or the admins can decide if they uh, can give access to, as a reviewer to that translator. But uh, you can just leave the reviews because the translations are already available uh, even when they are not reviewed. So it's good to have a good process for that. And all, uh, a lot of this, uh, Zhenya has contributed a lot to, to this process. So unfortunately he's not with us, but I'll try to explain as much as I can. So for language quality assurance, uh, if you notice a mistake in the English version, please uh, report it. Uh, I have actually added a page in the BISC uh, query uh, spreadsheet, uh, English mistakes, and there I started adding English mistakes uh, so that that need to be fixed. And I actually have a question for Christoph. Uh, what should we do about that? So uh, shall tr the translators or I uh, send a pull request uh, for all these mistakes or how should we go about it? Um, yeah, if you can do it, uh, it would be great just to create a pull request um, on, 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 on GitHub uh, for, for these changes. So there's, there's, uh, there's a, a file, it's called display properties. Uh, where the English source files are based. So it, it just depends how, if, if there's, uh, if everyone is uh, familiar with GitHub or if there's one, um, if, if you um, are going to, to create a pull request for this kind of stuff, maybe. Yeah, I can start uh, with the ones that I have already in the spreadsheet and create a pull request and see how it goes and yeah. Yeah, and I, I can, can guide you. And yeah. it would be great as a, for, for reviewing all changes. Uh, Steve, maybe as a, I, I can, maybe you can always kind of proofread uh, the suggested changes so that we have this kind of process so that, that the native speaker is reviewing the changes. As, as I'm not, I'm not an, my English is, is uh, quite bad. <laughs> so it would be great. Yeah, that's native. fine. That's fine. And I think uh, any, any issues that people find, if you, if you don't, want to make a pull request for any reason just make an issue you know just indicate what the issue is and open an issue and someone me or someone else can uh can can take care of it that's great steve and uh when making an issue it's best to do it for one mistake at a time right um i mean no nah, not necessarily i mean the, the, i think the spreadsheet that you sent had quite a few items yeah. so i think it would just be most, make more sense to make one issue in that case Okay. Uh, for everything. That's great. Yeah. So, T just to point out, if you create this one pull request and you translations, uh, that as soon as that is uh, kind of merged into master, uh, it means that in Transifex, uh, 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 the translations for this key will be invalidated. So it, it looks like as they were not being translated before, as as it always. Um, the only way Transifex knows if something is added or changed is if, if, if the content is exact, is identical. And if, if you change the, the value of some keys, it's, it, it's like it has not been translated. But within Transifex, I think in the uh, suggested translations, there is the suggestion of the previous translation, so you can just copy it into and adapt it. But just that you're not uh, surprised if you change some source translations, 
that it has an effect on all the translations as well. Okay, great. Uh, then uh, I will then take care of that, the, uh, either create an issue or uh, send a full request, and then I will inform Steve, right? It's uh, in some way or the other, either via Slack or... Uh, so that uh, you can, on, on a, um, Aruna, on a pull request, you can request review of a person. So I think you should be able to. Okay, great. It. Great. Uh, then, uh, in the past, some strings had trailing spaces and they had uh, caused problems with, uh, when updating the translation. So I would like to uh, uh, inform all the translators to make sure that there are no trailing spaces in the tra translated strings. Um, so it would be great. So normally it's not a huge deal um, because um, the UI works fine, but sometimes it, it causes truncations on, on strings. But the, the main problem I have with this uh, trailing spaces in translations, when I'm updating the translation files, I'm, I'm checking the changes. And within my uh, code editor, I, I get kind of warnings uh, if there are some issues and the trailing spaces always are causing warnings. And so I have lots of lots of um, warnings that makes it hard to, to check. And if, if I have in lots of warnings in every language I'm consuming to update the translations. That's the reason behind this as well. Okay. And the third point is once the translations have been updated, in the next release, which is uh, supposed to be May 15th, uh, it would be great if the translators check the strings in the updated software. Because- yeah. so Sorry, regarding the, the date of the, of the next release, uh, we had a, a kind of a hotfix release on, on oh, Monday yes. already, um, because um, uh, it, it, uh, when we did the, uh, were in development of the, the new decentralized reputation feature, we saw that it um, takes more time than we, want to accept until we have something available for the users. So we did a hotfix release already on Monday and I updated also the translations uh, on Monday. So the next release um, will be, I think, if there's no kind of emergency release, will be earliest uh, end of May or beginning of April. Ah, um, June, sorry. Okay. Beginning. Okay, but in any case, uh, this is something that it would be great, good practice to uh, check the uh, translations in the release because there may be some discrepancies or something. Yeah, that and also uh, the length of the strings because not, uh, of course we have always the solution that we are uh, truncating uh, the strings if they're too long and you can do a rollover and see the full string. But uh, it would be great if it's somehow possible to, to not have this truncation in at least in most parts. I know some languages are quite hard to make compact, like French, uh, mm -hmm. but maybe just for the, the major major strings that they are kind of readable without resizing the client a lot. Um, I had a, so it was about the maker and the taker. Uh, for example, in French, um, as far as I know, trader use taker and maker terms. And if I use the French equivalent, which is fairly unknown, uh, it will, uh, longer, uh, so I, I think I will keep some English term like taker and maker. Yeah, yeah. I think as a, in German, also I also use some uh, some English terms as well because it it at some point it gets getting super weird to read. Uh, if you're trying to translate everything in yes. in the local language uh, about the, the term uh, seed. Did you translate it uh, in no, German? I also, I also used seed in the end. Okay, but uh, in the software version for the French, I, I, I've seen uh, grain, which is uh, the equivalent <laughs> of uh, seeds already. So okay. it uh, may require that like, uh, we postpone change uh, already translated term in French in the software. It is already working now. Arnaud? Yes. I think you can look maybe at the uh, bit Coin translations to see if uh, other um, French translators oh, good have idea, yeah. translated these words. Okay, good uh, idea. I, th Thank I you. think it's more on a language per language basis. I don't know. 
Yeah, I will, I will definitely look at it to, to get, but uh, I'm sure that uh, seeds, I'm not sure that seeds um, problem have been uh, issue in the Bitcoin translation if they use the term seeds, but um, I, I will give a try to, to find out. Thank you. Yeah, in, and in French, they keep a lot of English words, so maybe you don't need to translate. Yeah, I think so. We are, we are close neighbors, so <laughs> we, we, we use English term for centuries. So I think it's uh, it's not going to be an issue for a French user to keep some in English term. If we add uh, um, uh, some marine dictionary, something like an help uh, that is uh, um, available uh, easily, it's, for me, it will be the best option and it uh, shortcuts the, the issue of too long uh, sentences in the software. Yeah, this is a great idea. I think it seems like we need to create a list of English words that are kind of we are translatable, not translatable sure in English are, for all other languages. Yes, we'll do that. Uh, we'll coordinate that with the glossary. It's a, it's the glossary. Because in it. my opinion, the BIS software is um, maybe a, a, a little difficult to 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 understand for a new user. I mean, I'm not new in the Bitcoin, but I'm not te technical. But I mean, now I have done some translation, but I'm not fully understanding uh, yeah. all the uh, terms and uh, functions. So, so for yeah. everybody, English and French, it, it could be great, I think. Yes, so that uh, brings us to the next point, difficult terms and queries. We have the spreadsheet. Uh, let's see. If I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's this, this spreadsheet. We have this, uh, yeah, here are queries. And then, um, so this is uh, lots of terms that we can include either here. We'll find a way to make sure that none of the terms escape us. So the question is then, who should we talk to among the developers to clarify these terms? Uh, Is it uh, going to be Steve or? I think if you just post in one of the Slack channels, I mean, I don't know if we need to designate yeah. anybody for it. Okay. Yeah, you could, post, you could post it in the dev channel. Post on the in dev channel, okay. Uh, I included the spreadsheet, but maybe it's best to just include uh, a term at a time, right? Um, that or or maybe uh, you just ask some, someone, maybe someone wants to take uh, to just cover all, all of them. I think. Okay. It's... Okay. Cool. Then and, I will. And maybe post post it on the forum rather than the Slack, because on the forum there it's static and we can go back. Easily. Okay. So I'll just post it on several channels. Uh, great. Uh, then uh, let's see. So yeah. Uh, the oh sorry. Here you go. Uh, so difficult terms and queries. Okay, great. And the glossary, uh, Jenya is going to give us more information on that. So that's it for the documentation. Uh, are there any questions? Not from my side. We're just uh, curious. This glossary that you that you mentioned, where uh, where was it? Where are you guys thinking it's actually going to go? Is it a website? Is it documentation? What? It's. It is actually on TransFX. We first started putting oh. it on, into the spreadsheet and it was kind of a, too much of a mess. So it's kind of integrated into, this, into the website, oh, sorry, TransFX. I, I don't, <laughs> Jenny is doing the, all the work regarding that. So uh, it should be, what he did, I think he put it into English and then it's automatically, it automatically goes to all the other languages, as far as I understand. Oh, so it's a tool specifically for translators? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. There is actually a glossary, uh, for all the languages, but some languages had maybe like 10, 15 terms. And what Jenny did is to choose the high frequency words and just it's like over a hundred words. So that is consistent across all languages. Yeah. Uh, so next is, uh, um, I'll just stop sharing. Uh, next on the agenda is the terms and conditions in the BISC software, because it's a lot of legal language and um, I think it's a good idea to translate it, uh, to, or to have to convey the information to people in other languages. Otherwise, it's weird to uh, so kind of say yes to something that you don't understand. So any ideas, any thoughts on that? 
I'm not sure that um, it has a, a legal. Um, it is legal if uh, someone who has no uh, qualification to translate uh, this kind of document. I mean, legal document to do it. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I think I think we we can't. We can't and, uh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I think we can't. Uh, I think it doesn't make sense uh, to just translate it, kind of word by word, or just as a. And then uh, use it in the in the client as as, as you mentioned. It uh, it will be definitely not legally binding uh, if there are some mistakes in there. And I think the English one was reviewed by lawyers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that what what you uh, suggested in the in the past, Aruna, that we might have kind of a, a compact uh, version of it, so kind of a pro, uh, um, short uh, short paragraph that describes in easy to understand words what what is is it about. And that we translate that and just reference the legally binding um, terms and conditions that are just available in English. Yes, uh, if that's okay, I don't really know in terms of when it comes to the legal part. I don't really know if, if this is okay. If if it's okay, then it would be great again if Steve, <laughs> sorry, uh, if uh, because it, it would be good. Uh, to have a really good, robust, clear English version, and then translators, we can again put it in Transifex, and translators can translate it. The translators can translate it. So that's a that's an English version of like a, an abridged version, a shorter version, or yeah, this is something that we need to. I think probably if Manfred should also be involved. I don't know if it's like to decide what's included in this summary. Well, I guess what I'm wondering is. I mean, so if we, if we agree that it's uh, it's it's not sufficient for a non-lawyer to translate the existing one, I mean, even if we make a shorter one, that's is it, don't, don't we run into the same problem? Um, no. So what 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 I mean is uh, that the shorter one would be we 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 have to mention that this is um, easier understanding, but it's not legally binding. Oh. And here is the. The English translation, which is legally binding, so it, yeah. of, of course this this kind of ha has to be um, back checked uh, with, with a lawyer that we don't <laughs> run into any, any problem. <laughs> how we were at that part, yeah. But uh, it should be it should be possible. But yeah, I think also we we are presenting the user there was this huge list of terms and conditions, and it might uh, scare people may, maybe also off to accept them. So just to make, we need to make sure that this is not a summary or it's more like meta, it's a description of the document, of, of these okay. terms and conditions. So, it's, uh, yeah. So should we just go ahead and start doing, working on that? Yeah, maybe also um, you created already the GitHub issue. Maybe you can mention Manfred um, um, yes. and, and talk about the idea that we are, we are talking about. Yeah. Uh, and it's what do you think how we can do this and yeah and then okay. yeah, the, the UI part is not such a big deal in the end mm -hmm. so S Steve and I can actually we can do that and then we have something we, uh, it will be on that issue that I started that would be great, yeah. okay great and I think one more item on the agenda uh, is the preparation for the uh, next release as Christopher you mentioned it's now at the end of May. Uh, most of the languages in the most of the core languages are doing quite well in terms of translations and reviews. The only things are like Chinese, which I will try to have uh, more activity there. And then Persian uh, again because of that issue. Uh, so is there anything that we should be aware of? Uh, and I'm going to make a reminder, uh, to send a reminder a week in advance, just to let the translators know about the release. Anything else that? No, regarding the, just the exact date of the release, uh, uh, end of May or beginning of June, I was just an idea, but it might take longer. Uh, okay. I just recently created a, a new milestone, uh, 1.20 uh, for this release, but yeah, yeah. that's something. Uh, it, I think um, it will take a couple, maybe one, two weeks uh, to discuss the exact um, strategies we want to implement. We already implemented lots of stuff, but it needs, uh, needs some more refinement. And after that, we can maybe have a better idea how, how much the, 
how long the implementation details will take. But it, it won't be before end of May. Okay. That's for sure. Uh, should we try to have this uh, translation of this uh, some uh, meta for the terms and conditions by then, or we shouldn't hurry? Why not? It would be great, yeah, why not? Okay, so we'll just try to make it happen by then. Uh, and also regarding future calls, I thought it would be great to have monthly calls like that. Uh, and unless anyone is opposed to that, maybe next call we'll do, uh, we'll start live streaming them on YouTube, like the growth calls. And we'll find the time that is that works for all or the majority. <laughs> so. Um, that would be great, thanks. Uh, I think that's it for the agenda, and we have three minutes before two o'clock. Is there anything that uh, we would like to discuss or uh, cover? Mm, Just th thanks for no. translating. <laughs> thanks for translate, translating the client. Yeah, I think it makes it makes it way easier for lots of native speakers uh, who are not so so fluent in English to use the client, which is very important. Yeah, actually, I wanted to mention. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thanks ahead, for the help. No, no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, also there are several people who are translators or who are interested in translating who are also ambassadors. And I think are not you're interested, you're also an ambassador. And I it would be yeah. great, yeah, if uh, for the next call we can have a coordinated effort of figuring out how to do ambassadorship and translation and uh, liquidity weeks or some other ways of reaching out and getting a bigger audience and it would be great for people from different areas to be involved uh, get that done okay yeah, uh, yeah so, cool and thank, thanks Aruna for organizing that thank you so much for joining and uh, I'm sorry but some of you needing to get up very early uh, yes, and I think then that's it. I am going to post this, we're going to have this call available on YouTube and I'm going to add more information uh, to the issue uh, with the next steps and a quick summary for those who haven't um, been part of the call and then coordinate all these different activities that we have discussed during the, the call. And a lot of details will be also available on Slack. So yeah. All good. Cool. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, Joe.